Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's our first example of how to use the nodal method of analysis to solve a simple circuit like this. Remember that the nodal analysis method is specifically useful for something with current sources like the circuit right here. We have a 10 amp source, a 5 amp source, we have three resistors. And so let's follow the steps that we need to follow to solve this circuit. What we're trying to find is the unknown voltages at the nodes and the unknown currents in the branches. The unknown currents are labeled I1, I2, I3. Notice the small i's indicate the currents in the branches. We typically use large i's to indicate the current sources. Some books do it the other way around, but as long as you keep it straight, that's fine. Here are the steps. Find a reference node with known voltage. We have a, a node down here at the bottom. We'll go ahead and connect that to ground and call that zero volt. That will be our reference node. The second step is to assign voltages to the other nodes, and there's two other nodes. We've already got V1 and V2 labeled. If you watched the previous video, this is actually the exact same circuit, but now we're actually going to do a numerical example with the circuit. The third step is to assign currents to each branch. Notice there's three branches. We assign three currents. It's always a good idea to try and guess what the direction of each of the currents will be. Notice that we have a strong current source pushing current in this direction to this node right here. We have another current source driving current in this direction, and it's reasonable to expect that current will flow in this direction to that branch, in this direction to this branch, and in this direction to that branch. Now, assume that we were wrong in our guess. Let's say that this was actually in the opposite direction. Well, what you'll find then is if you do everything correctly, you'll get a negative value for this for this current, which then indicates that the arrow is drawn in the opposite direction. So a negative value with an arrow drawn in the opposite direction gives you still the correct answer. The next thing we're going to do is apply Kirchhoff's current law to each of the nodes. We have two nodes, which means we're going to add up all the currents entering the node and set it equal to all the currents leaving the node. This node right here, we see that there's a 10 amp current entering the node, a 5 amp current leaving, I1 is leaving and I2 is leaving, which means for the first equation, this is step four, I like to label my steps, step four now, we can see that 10 amps entering the, entering the node equals the five amps leaving plus I1 leaving plus I2 leaving. So this is our first equation using Kirchhoff's current law. The second equation we can get by looking at this node right here, five amps is entering the node, I2 is entering the node, I3 is leaving the node, that means 5 plus I2 must therefore equal I3. Okay. Next, next step, define each current using Ohm's law. Now what we're going to do is find an expression for each of the current in, in terms of the voltage difference across each branch and the resistance in each branch. I1, so let's label step number 5. I1 can now be defined as the voltage drop from V1 to 0. That would be V1 minus 0 divided by the resistance on that, which would be 6 ohms. I2 can be defined as the voltage drop here, which is V1 minus V2, divided by the resistance of that branch, which is 4 ohms. And I3 can be defined as the voltage drop here, which is V2 minus 0, divided by 2 ohms, which is the resistance of that branch. So now, using Ohm's law, I've defined each of the three currents in my circuit. The sixth step is now taking those three currents and entering them back into our two equations that we got up here. So for I1, I2, and I3, we'll replace those by what the currents are defined as. For the first equation, we then get 10 is equal to 5 plus I1 can now be defined as V1 over 6 plus I2 can be defined as V1 minus V2 divided by 4. The second equation can be found by replacing I2 with V1 minus V2 divided by 4 and then plug in for I3, I3 is equal to V2 divided by 2. Make that decent looking too. There we go. Now, 
Now we have two equations, two unknowns, v1 and v2. We need to solve those two equations. So the last step, step seven, is set up a linear set of equations and solve for the unknown voltages. And once we know the unknown voltages, we can then find the unknown currents as well using these equations right here. The best thing to do here is to get rid of the denominators. We have a six and a four here, which means if we multiply the first equation, the numerator and the denominator, or the left side and the right side here by 12, we can get rid of the denominators here, and here we need to multiply this equation by 4. If we do that, we get the following two equations. So this is step number 7. Let me write them up here. Step number 7, the first equation, we get 10 times 12, that's 120, is equal to 5 times 12, that's 60. 6 goes to 12 two times, that gives me plus 2v1. And 4 goes in 12 three times, that gives me plus 3v1 minus 3v2. The second equation, multiply everything by 4, we get 20 is equal to, the 4s disappear, we get v1 minus v2. Oh, and that should be not an equal sign, but a plus, plus v1 minus v2, and there's the equal sign. And 2 goes into 4 two times, that gives me 2v2 and make that a, a 2 like that. So those are the two equations that we need to solve simultaneously, but I like to put them into a linear equation format, meaning all the v's on one side, all the, the constants on the other side. So on the left side, I'm going to switch the equation around. We have 2 plus 3, which is 5v1 minus 3v2 equals 60. Subtract from 20 is 60. Move the other side, I get 60 like that. That's my first equation. My second equation, I get v1 minus v2, bring the two v2s across, that's minus 3 v2 equals, bring the 20 across, minus 20. Here are the two equations I now need to solve for v1 and v2. There's a multitude of methods by which we can do that. We like to use Kramer's rules or the method of determinants. Sometimes it's easy just to go ahead and use algebraic methods, but for the purpose of illustration, let's use the determinants and Kramer's rule to try and solve this particular problem, which means we're going to take the coefficients of V1 and V2, put those in a matrix. D is equal to 5 minus 3, 1 minus 3. The determinant now would be the product of these two, which is minus 15, minus the product of those two, that would be plus 3, which is equal to minus 12. And then I find my next matrix, which is going to help me find V1, so I'll call that matrix 1, I'll go like this, it is equal to, or this matrix is equal to, when we plug in the constants right here, instead of the coefficients of V1, we end up with 60 and minus 20, we keep the coefficients of V2, minus 3 and minus 3, and let's see what that is equal to, that would be minus 180, minus the product of those two, minus 60, which is equal to minus 240. And finally, what we do here is we take the coefficients, or we take the constants here, and replace the coefficients of V2 with those constants. We keep those coefficients. So the last matrix is equal to 5 and 1. And instead of writing minus 3 and minus 3, we write 60 and minus 20. So that is equal to a minus 100 minus the product of those two, which is 60, that's equal to minus 160. We're now able to find the solution to the two voltages. We know that voltage 1 is equal to minus 240, divided by the determinant minus 12, which is 20, that's 20 volts for V1. V2 is equal to the solution of this matrix, which is minus 160, divided by the determinant minus 12, for that, we need a calculator. 160 divided by 12 equals 13.3 volts. So now we have the voltages of our two nodes. V1 is at 20 volts. V2 is at 13.3 volts. Let's see if we can now find the, the currents, the three unknown currents, I1, I2, and I3. So I1 was defined as V1 over 6. V1 divided by 6, which is equal to, V1 is 20 divided by 6, which is equal to 3.33 amps. That would be the current in branch 1. Branch 2 current I2 is equal to, 
We have I2 defined as V1 minus V2, V1 minus V2 divided by 4, V1 is 20 volts, V2 is 13.3, divided by 4 is equal to, so subtract that from 20 and divide by 4, and we get 1.67 amps, 1.67 amps for I2, and now let's find I3. I3 is defined as V2 divided by, four, by 2. I3 is equal to V2. Where am I here? V2 divided by 2. V2 was equal to 13.3 volts divided by 2, which is equal to 6.67 amps. There are the three currents in the three branches. Now let's do a quick check to make sure we have this correct. I3 is going to be the sum of the current source here and I2. Since I2 is equal to 1.67 amps, we add that to 5 amps, we should get 6.67 amps. 6.7 amps comes around here. We have 10 amps going in this direction. So 10 amps should add up to 5 amps, I2 and I1. So 5 plus I1 plus I2, that does indeed give us, give us 10 amps. And at the bottom here, we didn't check that, but if we have I1 and I2 coming in together, I1 and I2, uh, no, I3. If you have I3 and I1 together, that should add up to 10 amps because that flows into this direction right there. Everything seems to check out. Looks like we have the correct voltages and the correct currents in the three branches. So this is the method that we use. Again, we go through the steps. We find the reference node. We then assign V1 and V2 to the two unknown uh, nodes right here. In the case you have more unknown nodes, you have V1, V2, V3, and so forth. The next step, we assign currents to each of the branches. We have I1, I2, and I3. You try to guess the correct direction, but if you're wrong, you don't worry about it because you simply get a negative answer then. Step four, apply the Kirchhoff current law to each of the nodes. So if you take each of the two nodes with the unknown voltages, you add up all the currents entering the node, and then you add up all the currents leaving the node. They said equal to each other. That's how you end up with the two equations. But notice we have three unknowns and two equations. The next step is using Ohm's law, you define each of the three currents in terms of the voltage drop across the branch divided by the resistance of that branch. We then take those definitions of the currents and plug them into our two equations right here that we obtained by using the Kirchhoff's current laws. We now end up with two equations that now only have the two unknowns, V1 and V2. We algebraically simplify that until we have it in the correct format, where we have it into a linear set of equations. We then have a multitude of methods by which we can solve it. Typically, it's easy to find the determinant by taking the coefficients of the V1 and V2, the unknown voltages, and then you find matrix 1 and matrix 2, or determinant 1 and determinant 2, where we replace the constants uh, we replace the coefficients of V1 first by the constants and the coefficients of V2 by the constants. We work that determinant out and then finally V1 is equal to the solution of this determinant divided by minus 12 and then V2 can be found by taking this number divided by minus 12. That gives you the two voltages. Then to find the currents, we plug those values for the voltages back into the definitions where we define the current in terms of V1 and V2 to find the currents. And that's how we use the nodal analysis method to find the voltages and the currents in a circuit like this. And again, the nodal analysis is specifically useful when we have current sources in the circuit.